I mean, this Naira scarcity has been a very, very, very big problem, you know. And then now it's so sad to see that it has now resulted in violence via protests in different parts of... In, I thought it was just in Lagos initially, but now I've seen that it has moved to Port Harcourt, like you reported, in the states, in Benin, in Wonwi. And then I'm asking myself, fine, I understand that there's the thing about Naira scarcity, right? And how it has actually affected people's businesses, their survival, and all like we rightly saw from the Vox Pop. But then I would also love to hear from you. What, what, what are your thoughts on this? And let me start with Uti. Uti. Uti, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So how is this affecting Nigeria? Yes. Hmm. I think we've all seen it. Uh, the Vox Pop is pretty much the sentiment on the streets. Um, people are suffering. The, the man who spoke in Yoruba, I think that's just the sentiment out there. People are suffering. There's nothing worse than, it's a different thing to not have your money. Mm. And it's a different thing to have money. You can't access it. You can't spend it. The available channels that you should be able to spend it on, you can't. I mean, it's just, and it doesn't appear, like, I think the most concerning thing for me is that I don't see that there's an end in sight. Yeah. Because the president spoke about reintroducing the old 200 naira into um, circulation. Like I said yesterday, I don't know um, from my sort of mini research, I don't, the volumes of those 200 naira notes do not sound like they are the quantities that will alleviate the challenges of the average Nigerian man. And nothing has been said about the capacity to produce and meet the need for the quantities that are required of the new notes to drive this. So there's also a lack of information. You know, when there's a void of information, when people don't have anything to hold on to, there's no end in sight. So it, it, it almost amplifies the frustration in an exponential manner. Mm -hmm. If I know that this is going to end in two days, then I can convince myself that, you know what, it's only two days and I'll hold on. Mm -hmm. But right now, nobody that I've spoken to at least seems to know when this is going to end. Mm -hmm. Do we have some sort of communication of a, of a rollout plan to say more money is going to come into the system tomorrow, more money is going to come into the system by Monday? Nobody seems to know. And everybody is just waiting. Um, this is, I mean, this is how the first scarcity just ended up. Nobody spoke to it. Nobody said what was happening. Nobody addressed it. And eventually, it, you know, the market found itself, the lines fought, fell where they may. And we can't do that in this situation because people are literally, everything is grinding to a halt. People are being paralyzed. I remember when um, uh, it was announced that CBM would start collecting the Naira. My first thought process was, why do people still have the old notes? Okay. But then I realized, are you going to let go of the old when you, at least you if you have something you're holding, you. right? Yeah. You might be able to spend it. Because remember, I'm thinking by now, everybody should have paid in their money. But the fact is that the gap that exists with the new notes requires that the old notes remain in circulation. It's almost like I have to prove that I have money. You know, like I'm old, old. my old ones on our notes to say, you know what, I have been no real answer. And I think that was what was missing for me in the address from the president, where we gave a solution, but it was a half measure. There was no end in sight. It was, it was literally like, here's, you have a massive surgical wound, mm -hmm. and then I give you a little plaster to hold it together. Then I say, sorry, <laughs> just hold on. Ah, <sighs> well, um, Damnola, what do you think? Well, about this whole Naira scarcity thing, I, as much as it makes sense, it doesn't make sense. That's the funny thing. It makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. And I'm not surprised at the outcome that we're experiencing currently. I mean, the riots, because really, what were we expecting? People are literally suffering. Okay, today, while we're on the street, you know, some people, I mean, maybe pff, we're just being people, really, but in the true sense of it, some people were literally just asking for cash and i had to tell them that you see me that i'm doing this interview for you i also don't have cash so we are in it together it's you guys we're in it together it's not just a you problem mm -hmm. don't think because i'm wearing makeup and i look all fine and stuff then everything i have everything all sorted out no we are in the everybody they collect let's put it that way <laughs> it, we are in it 
together if it doesn't and at this rate that we are going and like uti rightly said nobody's coming out to tell us that okay this is when this whole problem is going to end you know we're, we're just used to in nigeria we're just used to there's a problem and then we'll just keep going with it whenever it ends is when it really ends and i don't even think that's the best way to live life because I, with the way this thing is going on there's going to be a very high increase in um in crime rates mm -hmm. somebody was one of the guys that we were interviewing today well he was off mic but we're having a conversation and then he goes ah i'm a lot daluru that's we're going to go and scatter, scatter everywhere. everywhere i mean and really i could see the pain where he was coming where i mean that's not the best way to go about it yeah. but really that's what he just that that's that's the level at which he could think Mm. And it's like I'm a lot and ah, um, there was there was really nothing there was there was really nothing I could say to really pacify him because me uh, me as a person I'm also suffering. For instance, yesterday at the office, I wanted to drink water, mm. as in just one bottle of water. We sent the office um, assistant to get cash for us, and then she didn't even know that they would not collect the old one thousand naira note and five hundred naira notes. And then she got to, she had already collected the cash, and the POS merchant gave her old notes. Mm. So she got to where she wanted to buy something and those ones didn't collect the money. Okay, fine. Return the money back to where you collected it and then take your money back in transfer. They said they're not going to send money to her. And up until right now, there's a lot of POS merchants that actually have old notes with them and they are willingly going to give it to you. They won't even flip. But if you return it to them, they are they not going collect to collect it. it. Yeah. So the whole Naira, the whole <laughs> Naira, I mean, okay, fine. But we came and said, okay, we can use 200 Naira notes for the next 60 that has up until um, April 10. Yeah. But is the 200 Naira notes, is it really going to be in circulation? Yeah. Is it really going to be available? People are stranded. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking to my cousin today and she was like, she has 9K cash that she cannot use because it's old and that she has not been able to go to work. Yeah. What do we do? People will soon start snatching bags, though. <laughs> no, it has Just its like effect. Dami and Uti said, um, we are at a point of uncertainty nigerians yeah. so it's like should i use my money should i not use my money my own money i don't know what to do because on one hand you have supreme court um pass given its judgment you have cbn who should we obey so even the whole system is so confused that even lawyers will come out and say no how would it, how would cbn you know overrule what the supreme court some people are saying no cbn has the power to so and at the end of the day nigerians are confused so we are the ones feeling the heat and this is so honestly i did not so i i saw this coming if it prolonged for too long this that where we are now because there were already signs of it right so i had someone um was it yesterday or so saying that in the morning when um they made the ruling saying when cbn came out and said he's not going to change its stand on um the deadline so he said from that morning he was trying to take public transport so they were no longer taking the old notes so he had to beg literally begged. So at the point he went to the bank, tried to withdraw money, stayed there for hours, and he was able to get 2000 In the evening, in the evening, the new notes. So they are now saying they are taking old notes. So everyone is, are we taking old notes? Are we? So Nigerians, we are, and also insecurity. Yeah. So people are just at that point where they've had it. It's like, it's too much. Where do we go from here? And also, just like Ute Wright said, there's also the timeline. How, when is this going to end? And also, um, Nigerians are also at that point where they are just trying to figure out what this is all about. Is it, is it what's this story about? Is it really for the, for, for, for the Nigerians or not, right? Is it really in favor of the, the how am I going to put it? An ordinary man on the yeah. street, mm -hmm. or is it a political move? Because it all started like it's economical, it's this and that, but now it's very glaring that this is very political. I mean, you find governors coming out to make statements. It's everything. It's just a confusing state. That's where we are right now. A confusing state. I'm, I'm actually confused, right? Yeah. And I don't know what what the future holds right now. 
like I said at the beginning of the show, we've been thrown into a state of chaos and confusion. And I mean, as we ha we've all said, there's now an increase in crime rates. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that because the truth is that that is how these people know how to express themselves, yeah. you know. So they are going to start burning places, they're going to start attacking people because that's how they know how to express the anger that they have inside of them. They don't know to do better. But then at the same time, yes, is that the right way? We could actually go through peaceful protests, but they, they don't understand peace. They are men of war. They are men of, mighty men of valor that... Do we have to protest in Nigeria for our own currency? Ah, well, that is the point that we've gotten to now in our dear country. And it just seems like... The fact that we don't even know when this thing is going to end to say, okay, maybe after the election. I mean, we have just how many days? About eight days before the election. So are we saying that, okay, after the elections, this whole thing is going to die down? Are we saying that, okay, maybe two weeks into this, there will be money in circulation? What exactly? So I think I'm actually urging the government, let us know what we are even working with. Let us know what it is that we can look forward to. Let us know what to expect. Now, there are panic messages going every, uh, going around saying, stock up your house for the next two weeks. In fact, some people say, stock up your house for a month. Some people are saying, because we don't know what's going, to happen, know what's going to happen. Election. And there is nothing in this world that is as terrible as living in uncertainty. Mm. Not knowing what to expect. Because right. you know what's going to happen the next minute. So, I mean, this is really, uh, this is affecting, there's no, there's nobody, like you said, you don't touch everybody. Everybody. There's nobody that this has not touched. There's nobody that this has not affected in one okay, way or the you, other. If, if you say you have money to, okay, you are doing the cash list even before now, because some people um, are saying that, oh, even before now, we're already doing the cash list. Yeah. What about the insecurity currently, right? So, it is it degenerated to insecurity. Mm. Are you now safe with your cash list you've been doing? What about your security currently? The truth is that Nigeria cannot even go completely cashless. That's Unless we want to lie to each other. Okay, I want to go and buy biscuits now. I'm going to tell Yarisi that he's selling petty things. That okay, I want. To, she'll just look at me like, "Who be this guy?" What are you talking about? And it's even the fact that banks are not also helping. So yeah. you expect that in such a situation, um, charges. So in such a, I'm expecting banks to reduce, reduce charges. Yes, right? yes. So banks are charging right same rate and the amount of transfers have tripled because people are now trying Doing to more yeah. online yeah. transactions yeah. so yes. i expect the bank to respond to this by reducing charges mm -hmm. and also even we nigerians we have to be fair to ourselves pos operators we have to be i, I know like it's because this goes it's a circle it yes. goes but around but they money to get the money that's, anyway. that's what i'm saying it's a circle yeah. but it's, it's a ridiculous circle. sometimes right. the, the rate is very ridiculous yeah. sorry, sorry to cut you short you know while i was on the street today a woman said that to collect 50k you have to pay 10,000 naira why why it doesn't make any sense i mean i can understand that they also get the money because i asked one of the pos merchants that i spoke with today i asked him i said okay how do you get money and then he's like ah they buy from those that have it and i'm like okay that's why you people also sell at a high rate they say of course that they, 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 it depends on how much they buy it that also determine how much they are going to sell it. But some people are still being very greedy. You know, Nigerians, an average Niger well, an average black man is greedy. But you see, Nigerians, our own is very different. Our own is really very different because we just want to take and take and take. We don't even care if it's going to affect the next person. We really don't care about that. We just want to take and take. And it, we just keep complaining about the government. Oh, the government is this. Oh, the government is that. They should have put a, long more, a, a lot more time, blah mm -hmm. and blah. But we ourselves, we're not even making the work so easy. Because even if we get a good government now, Nigerians will still frustrate the government. So it's... I like what you said there, that we're not also helping ourselves. We're not so being true. fair on ourselves we're too. We're not being fair. But then at the same time, let us also consider this. Do you want the conductor in the bus to collect transfers from passengers. See, my sister, hmm. we've gotten to that point. What? There's no cash now. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? That's the only way out of it. Actually. I will transfer 100 naira if you will take me to where, where I'm, I'm going. going Honestly. To. But then, that will also increase, the, um, um, uh, that will also increase, should I say, internet fraud? Mm. Like, see, Nigerians are not truthful people and I think that is my own problem. Nigerians yeah. are, if we were truthful people, ah, well, a lot of things could work. I mean, we have, we have a lot of alternatives, if we're being honest, because I believe that there's, I always believe that there's one solution with several so, alternatives. Mm -hmm. Do you get? But Nigerians are not, Nigerians are not truthful people. Okay, like you said, now you transfer 100 naira to the conductor, and then the conductor has seen the money, but tells you he has, he not, has not seen it, it, with a lot of proof that he has not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see? Let's see. So I want to hear from you. Well, I was just listening when um, the ladies were speaking and a couple of things. First of all, I don't, 
I think greed is a very strong word. I think that when you have a supply problem, mm. you have a demand problem, yeah. it becomes, let's not forget that money has now become a product. It's exactly. now become something that you're selling. And when you're selling, you're selling with, first of all, I need to make a profit. Secondly, I need to prospect as to when I sell this one, how much am I going to buy the next one? By that time, in a scarcity, you can guarantee that to replace, it will also be higher. Mm. So I have to speculate to say, you know what, I have got this 50,000 naira today for 60,000. If I sell this at 70, odds are that by the time I'm going to buy that same 50,000 tomorrow, it's probably now 70. So I would sell 80 to hedge my bet. So the reality of it is that as long as the situation doesn't, doesn't the, the supply issue isn't addressed, the demand will keep driving the prices up. That's just basic, you know, economics 101. Oh, yes. Um, the solutions there, um, and I can tell you that there isn't any bank today that isn't scrambling to improve the quality of the infrastructure so that more, um, more uh, transactions, more cashless transactions can, can go through and, and be successful. But again, it's a process. I like what you mentioned about fraud because... The fact is we also have a largely, um, I don't want to say illiterate, but uneducated, unenlightened population, people, yes. particularly in that aspect of technology where people, you know, and this is, I mean, everybody's going to take advantage. So if the scammers can get in, if the fraud fraudsters can get in, they're going to do so. So these are all the gaps that we're identifying. These are all the problems we're identifying. Even when Glory was talking about the banks reducing charges. We've seen some banks do that. But if you understand the ecosystem of how banking transactions work, it's an ecosystem. The charges don't, don't all sit with the banks. So any bank today that is telling you they're not taking charges is actually paying some part of those charges on your behalf because the ecosystem still has to keep running. Okay. If I decide not to charge you, that means I've put my hand in my pocket and pay for that service. Um, but it's great to see that some banks are doing that so they understand how it's impacting people, right? But let, what is, for me, it's like I keep trying to say that what is the solution? What is the way forward? Because this is when innovation comes into play, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. A lot of organizations need to really, and I mean, we have fintechs, but this is when you then realize that all the fintechs, they're all playing on the same technology. Mm -hmm. So all this, we're fintech, we're fintech, we're fintech. Where is it going? Mm -hmm. um, for me, I always try to say, you know, let's learn from where these things have happened before. Um, something similar happened in India. Uh, I can't remember what year it happened. Um, and the same thing happened. Overnight, we're taking out the notes, we're changing, and it was a mess. It affected the economy adversely, um, and they didn't actually succeed in getting rid of corruption. But then we also can look at countries who have moved on to other solutions um, that they have now used and they're, they're working in the kind of scenarios that we're talking about, like paying for transport and buses, so things like M-Pesa in Kenya. The sad part of it is that we don't have the time for the innovation. Mm -hmm. So whoever can get to the top of that line today and create a solution that works, even when the solution works, then the problem is adoption. Because how are you going to con con uh, convince Yarisi that the 20 naira you want to pay for the biscuits, she can get it through the system? So, like I said, that for me is what is most unsettling. There doesn't seem to be a solution in sight. And then there doesn't seem to be information. And nature abhors a vacuum. So as long as we continue, it just feels like you're, you're standing for a far, further, like you're standing, trying to stand further away from a fire with a keg of petrol. But then something is dragging you closer and closer to the fire. That's what it feels like we're in now. And what's going to be... The zenith of it, or what's going to happen? What's going to be the chaotic situation? I don't want to think about it, and I keep saying, uh, in as much as we can do in our faith, is to pray for Nigeria. Mm. But I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, the problem just seems so big. big very but, yes. Yeah, we just have to get through it. Like everybody I've spoken to is like, what shall we do? Those that can stay at home, that have a little bit of food, I, I'm staying at home. I'm staying safe. It just seems hopeless. I think that's the thing. And there's nothing more dangerous than that. People just go on a rampage. You know, there's violence and there's crime. I'm thinking, 
I thought that it would lead to a reduction in crime because really and truly, um, there's no notes, there's no new notes to steal. To steal, yeah. But there's creativity in it that I can steal other things and people will take the opportunity. So we find ourselves in a, in a terrible situation. I, 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 I genuinely have been seeking answers and, and I haven't found any yet. It, that's what's most scary about it. Thank you, Utsi. I mean, I was also going to say, two things I was going to ask that Utsi has even touched on already. I was going to ask, first things first, like Glory rightly asked, what, what are the banks doing to, you know, help to curb the situation and make it even better? So since it now seems like we're all surviving through online transactions, so if I want to pay 100 naira, 200 naira, you still charge me 26 naira or whatever amount it is that they charge for irrespective of how much it is that I'm sending. I think that's a bit unfair. But like Uti rightly said, there's a process, right? So, yes, sometimes they have to take, you know, bear the brunt, and then, but at the same time, it won't just happen overnight that they'll just come and say, okay, we're not charging you anymore for transactions. Because I remember there was a time they didn't use to charge for transactions. We got to this point through something as well, right? Also, we've talked about solutions. So, okay, after all said and done, we've complained, we've gone through this, we've, there's been so much violence and all of that. Now, what do we do? And she mentioned coming up with, with innovative solutions. But then, do you think tomorrow, are we ready for that? <laughs> These are the things that I, I, I think about when I say, so before we got to this point, what were the, what, what, what were the processes put in? Or what, were the, what did they think of? Did they, did they do an analysis to say, okay, if X happens, we should do Y. If this happens, let's do this. For example, transportation. Most of the buses, the commercial buses, take physical cash, right? We're saying, okay, let's start transferring to the conductors. But then, <laughs> then we said, if we start transferring to the conductors, we're going to take me a hundred naira. We want to the money, you know? So we're going to have that problem. I remember there was a time we had this conversation on the show, and I said, okay, maybe we should now start using cards. You know, you get to the, to the what they call it? You get to the bus, and maybe you can yeah. tap or something, something like that. But I mean, I'm saying that this is not something that we can just wake up to as well so all of these things i think this is just putting us in a very tight situation and not you seem like you want to say uh, something yeah. okay so um innovation mm. we are in in it deeply currently so it's not something that's just going to like just Spring happen up, yes yeah. so but first i think there is need for clarity even in the political system first People have to even be sure what direction should we take. Mm. So you have the governors in some states saying that keep using the old okay, Naira yes, note, yes. going against what the president is saying and what CBN is saying. What happens to the people in those states? Who should they obey? Who should they believe? Who should they follow? So the, if there is even clarity, like they have one voice, we know they have their something, they're trying to um, sections in their political parties, but for the masses, like if you have one voice to say, okay, we are all saying that do not use the old naira notes at least from there we can start from there mm. so now some people are trying are still saying let's use it we are using it so you find people fighting um in the case of um um was it port Harcourt i just said in my yes, yes, the news, yeah. when they are fighting people for not taking the old note that's because they believe some other powers have said collect this note it, yes so if there's even clarity on what direction to take i think it's a step in the right direction at this point Okay, so if I hear you correctly, you're saying that there is no oneness in there the voice. No, so yeah. this one governor is coming to say continue. I, I saw a video of, I don't remember what governor, I think it was um, El Rufayad, that yes, said yes. for the next yes. so you die or something, yes. they will continue yes, to collect this note. So El Rufayad comes and tells us this, Gamje comes and says this, Buhari comes and says this, someone only comes and says no, you can continue. This lady says no, don't continue. In fact, just before we came on the show, I saw another CBN directive that said they did not ask anybody to bring... 500 naira and 1000 naira notes that's to nice. the cbn to the cbn and i asked my own like so what what exactly so i think you're you right on that let's even understand what is this we're following are we really listening to pmb when he says okay 200 naira notes will be in circulation you can still continue spending the old 200 naira notes but then you can take your 500 naira because i know that yesterday that was what was said you can take your old 500 naira 1000 naira you just need to log on to the CBN website and register, then generate a reference code, and then you can take your money to, to CBN. But then this directive we saw just even a few yeah. hours ago says, don't okay. bring any. I, there's another one that we showed me this evening that said, if you have up to, I think in, in Kogi State, mm -hmm. if you have up to 500,000 Naira, that's where you can come to 
the bank yeah. if the money is not up to five hundred thousand don't so i you're right i think we need that oneness that clarity to say okay this is because that's another thing that's the confusion we're talking about there's so many there are different things that are being said everywhere so we don't even know even the people on the street don't know what to believe they don't know what to do so really and truly should they carry their one thousand naira, five hundred naira notes to the bank i just got an email from one of from one of my banks now saying we're open on saturday bringing your naira notes <laughs> And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you said you're opening. Okay, so that means that we can actually take money to this bank. But the other banks are saying, no, take it to CBN. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. There's, there's a whole lot. You know, I think lot. that apart from disparity of voices, mm. our major problem in this country is implementation. Mm. You know, the, the, the people in the place of power just say, okay, we are going to do this. They don't think about implementation. They don't have implementation in mind. Because it is one thing to lay down rules. It is one thing to say, okay, let us do it this way. It's another thing to actually see that that thing is actually done the way it should be done. done it's yeah. basic project management. You need to be able to break down your project into bits. Know how, okay, we need to do this first before we commence on this. This can run simultaneously. But we don't, implementation feels like it doesn't exist in the Nigeria sector of power. You know, they just come outside and say, okay, Nigerians, this is what we are going to do. But then they don't even follow it. They don't care if the people that are you know, down there, like the regular Nigerians, how they can even be able to manage the entire situation. For instance, this was um, cash scarcity thing. I, I, I genuinely don't believe that they should, I mean, the central bank governor should have just come up to say, okay, by so, 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 and so date, um, the old Naira notes will not be used again. And it is stamped as that. I mean, I feel like it is really inhuman. Now, this is why. Ideally, I think that the old Naira notes and the new Naira notes should still be coexisting until the old Naira notes would fade away. Because you can, it's, it's, it's our legal tender. Some people, apart from those who, I mean, apart from those who hoard cash, mm. some people generally don't take their money to the bank. Especially those in rural parts of Nigeria. They don't take their money to the bank. They probably put it in Kolo or they tie it in their wrapper or under their bed or something like that. So what should happen to those people? But when you create the awareness that, okay, by so, so and so time, that's giving a very, I mean, a wide gap. By so, so and so time, okay, this um, currency will no longer be acceptable anymore. You know, people will keep spending it with the hope that when they go to the POS or when they go to the ATMs, they will get new notes. And before you know what is happening, the old notes will not be in circulation anymore. But outwardly just saying, okay, we're not going to spend this money again. And that's that about it. I, don't, I really do not think that it's fair to common Nigerians, honestly. <sighs> I, I I just really pray that this thing doesn't get to the point where we're in, as bad as we're envisaging it to get to. I just pray that this election actually comes. I also pray that the election is not postponed because I was having a conversation with someone earlier today and then he said to me that he thinks this is just also a propaganda mm -hmm. to actually extend the, the elections election. and then he even took me back and sent me the last um, election directive where they i think i don't remember if that was 20 or 2015 now where they actually changed the, the dates for the and he's like you know what this probably was going to happen but you know deep inside of me i don't want this election to be postponed i want to I, ah, this is i've never yeah. been so eager for something to come um, and i think that's the exact reason why they are doing what they are doing because they know that there's so many people that actually want to vote mm. and they want to vote right hmm. so you know yeah. it's, it's only a political move to you know just try to so just that's why just shake to come us a back bit. to what you said you know it's it's intentional so the yeah. timeline given the short time now that's because it's very intentional very, yeah. very, yeah. there is there is a plan there is a reason why this was done and that's the reason why no matter what is being done and think even this protest springing up here and there mm -hmm. hoodlums i think it's really orchestrated and someone yes. somewhere is trying He's to orchestrate something. some of yes. this and that's to frustrate someone else's plan still for the purpose of this election mm -hmm. and that's the reason why they can't that's the reason why they can't extend it more than what, what because it's is. there is a reason for it mm. okay i think we can take um comments now glory please i think you have a comment um so this is from Shegun. He said, he's, he says, hello, I am Shegun from Owori Shoki, Lagos. PMB plan will work. It will work very well. There are results already, such as reduction in crime rate tanks. Really? Reduction <laughs> in crime rates? Sure? Okay, Uti, Uti, I think you have a comment. 
Mine is from Rafael Lanzaria. He says, when laws and policies are repugnant and there is out by the citizens, then the same government takes a decision to repel such laws or policies. CBN's new currency redesign policy is a good thing, but the timing and implementation exposes how ineffective our policymakers are in the whole world. There is no central bank that are involved in collecting deposits from individuals, but only in Nigeria. And the most disheartening thing is that our leaders have started to disobey um, the apex court announcements, making the courts lose its credibility as a last home for the common man. The last broadcast by the president reminded me of the military junta of yesteryears. This, this our democracy has no part to. <laughs> Dami, please let your comment. All right, it's only an illiterate that don't really understand the policy, but the main suffering bank on common man on the streets. Bankers and POS operators worsening the system. The solution is if bank play justice with populates, things will go better. Mm. I agree to that as well. Mm -hmm. This one says, living in uncertainty is dangerous. It's, po it's political because how can Buhari heads men <laughs> like Kaduna, Koji and Kano, Kogi and Kano governors outrightly be challenging their idol Buhari on this, including Festus Kiamo a while ago on another national TV, saying that the president was ill advised, agreeing that he flouted the Supreme Court order. It's a confusion galore, and the fact that there's poor communication goes to show that the leadership, which is in this injury time before exiting, is taking us for granted as always. However, I'm pleading with the populace to not play into the hands of the enemies by indulging in violence. This is my take from. Austin from Delta. Thank you so much, Austin. Gloria, I think you have one more yeah. comment. So this um, says, Daniel says, Good evening, my dear beautiful ladies of what are you saying? Honestly speaking, this thing has entered another level and people are already reacting. What kind of country is this that someone cannot access his or her own account? This is very ridiculous. There is, seri there is serious hunger in the land and there is still no solution coming to remedy the situation. Trust me, this violence and protest you are seeing is just child's play. I pray not. Yeah. What will happen next will be worse than answers. Oh, I pray not. If care is not taken, imagine me using money to buy my own money. This is highly unacceptable. Nice anchoring of the show, my dear beautiful lady, my dear beautiful chin um, sister, Chinelo. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, so after all said and done, I mean, I think we've just come to a conclusion that this is, it's really affecting us Nigerians, this entire Naira scarcity. And we've seen that it's leading to so much violence and it's also increasing crime rate, something that we thought was even going to reduce you know, crime rates. That instead, it is doing the opposite of it. And we're just hoping that it doesn't get, like Daniel rightly said, we hope that it doesn't okay. get to the same protest well, may, may, may i tell you that if people keep buying their own currency it's going to get to that point that we think it's not going to get to because it doesn't make any sense that i'm buying my own country's currency mm. in my in my country at a very high rate so if care is not taking we're going to get there what's any final words any final words ladies well, yeah you know i am i'm still pleading with nigerians that just become mm. i mean i'm like even me saying become i know it's it's a difficult thing to say because i mean how can you be but look at it in the long run it's going to affect you if this escalates more than more it already than this, is yes i mean you pro you're still trying to look for cash to buy you cannot run out of nigeria they, they who are doing calling the shots doing all of this it's easy for them to take a jet the next day and leave and this country go, and everything yeah, goes yeah, crazy yeah. so that's why you have to calm down no matter how angry you are just Calm down, knowing that if it goes any worse than this, it's going to be you and I. So just calm down and take it easy. <sighs> right, Let's see, any final words? Really just to wish Nigeria the best. These are terrible times, these are uncertain times. So protect our mental health as much as we can. Yeah. And um, let's keep the hope that we have a life that's all i can say because there's no there's nothing else to say really <laughs> like i said earlier we're in very tough but precedented times but in all of this please our priority should be safety and by the way oh we miss you as well yeah <laughs> but before we go do ensure you follow us on instagram at we show africa you can interact with us further drop a comment and most importantly follow all our social media engagements and remember to like share comment and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us if you missed today's quotes here it is again being in nigeria right now feels like the world is ending but <laughs> 
See you on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you for watching.